This is October 25th, uh, 2006. We're on East 78th Street. I've got my friend who's going to perform the music here. And we're going to do uh, the history of communism in China. Are you awake here? Hello? So, uh, which, which one are you going to try to do now? You weren't paying attention. I'm going to do the history of communism, sure history of communism in China. And this is uh, Jeffrey well, you know, Lewis of Jeffrey Sean Lewis and the Creeping you know, Grains. Yeah, or Jeffrey Lewis solo. You yeah. Speak uh, too much in that situation. Okay, you're already down there. What, give okay, me, what, well, what key? I'm going to count you in. It's in the key of C. Okay. So, uh, uh, you know, make sure uh, your voice is on. Okay. Yeah. I'll count you in. One, two, three, four. China is the world's third biggest country in size, but in people, the absolute biggest, with over one fifth of Earth's population. For thousands of years, emperors and dynasties ruled, and China developed its own ways and customs in relative isolation. The major belief system was Confucianism, which stressed morals but also allowed inequalities in society to be justified. Millions of China's people were starving, illiterate peasants with no land and no rights. By 1912, modern times had finally come. A revolution replaced the last emperor, who was a child, with a president, Sun Yat-sen. But in the north, warlords with their own armies still controlled a lot of land and power. Most people were not helped much by the new government. So in May 1919, many students rose up for reforms, including a former soldier, former peasant, and librarian named Mao Zedong. Inspired by the recent Russian Revolution, Mao and a few others went to the countryside to help the peasants organize for a better life with communism. At first, Sun Yat-sen worked with the growing communist groups to help defeat the warlords and build a new China together. But China's next president, Chiang Kai-shek, was more right-wing. He wanted to get rid of the warlords and the communists forever. So for most of the 1920s, control of China was battled for by three groups. The warlords, the communists, and Chang's Kuomintang, or KMT. By 1931, the communists and the warlords were losing, but then Japan attacked China and caused even more mess and catastrophe. But despite the Japanese encroachment, by 1934, the Kuomintang had the last communist groups surrounded and almost completely erased them. But 100,000 communists escaped on foot, evading the Japanese and the warlords and the Kuomintang troops who chased them. This retreat became known as the Long March, across a distance much bigger than America. Only Mao and a few thousand others were left by the march's end. But the whole way they treated peasants well and gave them land, so word spread about how truly dedicated the communist army was to being the common people's friend. With the support of the peasants, but without large forces, they couldn't fight in a normal manner. They had to develop so-called guerrilla tactics, still used by small forces to this day. When World War II broke out, Japan battled China. Chiang's forces suffered, but Mao fought on in this new guerrilla way. In 1945, Japan completely surrendered, faced with terrible atomic devastation. And after the pullout of the Japanese troops, China's civil war soon resumed, but now the Kuomintang was worn out and the communists had more support from the population. So they were able to chase Chiang's forces south till he fled the mainland to Taiwan, and China's 37 years of revolution and civil war were finally done. October 1949, the People's Republic of China was declared, a communist country under the leadership of Mao Zedong. First, they got rid of about a million landlords and gave everybody land. Then they made China's elite language simpler so that everybody could be educated. With help from the Soviet Union, China's backwards industry and shattered economy began to improve at a tremendous rate. And Mao was now renowned as a leader and as a poet. He said he wanted to let a hundred flowers bloom, meaning more free thought and more free expression. But he was also so respected and feared that nobody could tell him no when he started having some weird, bad ideas for the nation. In 1958, he launched the Great Leap Forward, a massive, unrealistic attempt to make the new communes and new industries modernize much faster. But with poor planning and poor weather, the economy crumbled and millions starved. It was a tremendous policy disaster. And after the failure of the Great Leap, China stopped getting help from the Soviet Union. Mao had more enemies and he was starting to be in a fix. His next weird idea to renew China's enthusiasm was with the youth, and he started the Cultural Revolution in 1966. It was one of the strangest upheavals in political history. 
Imagine if an American president said, okay, young rappers, hippies, and punks, obey me, rise up and take over. Um, millions of young red guards armed with Mao's red book attacked teachers, attacked historic sites, attacked government officials, and then attacked each other. And if my friend in the little box will pause a moment. Yes, around the, the same year that the Beatles wrote that song. Yeah, the Beatles in 67, 68 wrote Revolution. Yeah. Uh, you, you say you want, want a revolution. revolution. Well, you no, know, we'd, we'd all love, love to see the plan. plan. But if you, you talk about destruction, destruction, well, you know that you can count me out. And then the other part. And the other line. Yeah. Uh, if, if you go carrying pictures of Chairman Mao. Mao he ain't gonna make it with anyone anyhow. So it's very sad and ironic that I'm carrying these pictures of Chairman Mao. Okay, count me in. One, two, three, four. So there was no university for about four years. China's whole economy and culture were completely chaotic. Millions had worshipped Mao, but even this became a confused idea when Mao had to call off the Cultural Revolution and bring in the army to stop it. 1976, Mao died and control of China went between different groups, including Mao's wife's group, the Gang of Four, not to be confused with the British post-punk band. Today, China is still trying to reconcile the good aspects of communism in a capitalist world with an uncertain future for this ancient, giant, powerful land. Thank you, Jeffrey. I hope Very there's no good. quiz to follow. Quiz will follow. Okay. <laughs>